Once again, Pakistan's ruling party is trying to fix its broken relationship with India. Shabazz Sharif, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, has called for peace talks with India to resolve volatile issues such as Kashmir. Sharif, in an interview with Dubai-based Al Arabiya TV, stated that his country has learned its lesson after three wars with India. But really, do you believe what Pakistan's Prime Minister said? However, it appears unlikely that they have learned anything from their mistakes. The country's political leaders, as well as the generals of the Pakistan army, who are the true rulers in Islamabad, have repeatedly called for friendly relations and an end to hostilities. And every pro-peace statement is always accompanied by a call to resolve the issue of Kashmir. In our previous video, we talked about how Pakistan has engaged in a number of activities that have contributed to and will continue to contribute to the nation's downfall. The link to the video is in the description. But today, in this video, we will look at Pakistani issues and why Pakistan has always failed to achieve peace with India. First of all, this was not the first time that Pakistan had thought about starting peace talks. Also, this wasn't the first time that PM Shabazz had thought about having a meaningful dialogue. On April 11, 2022, the day after Shabazz Sharif was sworn in as Prime Minister, PM Modi congratulated him and reiterated India's desire for regional peace and security. PM Shabazz, who thanked India for the gesture, said that solving the Kashmir problem was essential to Pakistan's goal of having peaceful and cooperative ties with India. Now, let's get to the part about how the banned Tariq-e-Taliban Pakistan TTP, has resumed its terrorist attacks in Pakistan after breaking a ceasefire with the country's security forces at the end of last year, when the country was already reeling from a severe economic crisis public discontent with the ruling regime due to the flour crisis and fuel shortage and rising political unrest. Now, as a result of the current political climate, in his country he talked about the wars that his country fought with India. Wars that brought nothing but misery and poverty to their country. However, the truth is, Pakistan will never learn from its mistakes because it is a habitual offender and its nature will never allow it to live in peace with its neighbors. Also they aren't interested in achieving peace, they only care about Kashmir. Numerous instances exist, in which Pakistan has intended to initiate peace talks with India, but failed. Since the 1999 Lahore Declaration, there have been many windows of opportunity for peace between the two countries, for example, in 2004, 2007, 2010, 2015, and 2020, 2021, but they missed those windows of opportunity. Even the former Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif tried and failed twice, due to lack of support from its military. There are a lot of reasons why Pakistan fails in peace with India. Let's look at a few of these reasons. The Pakistani ruling party has no sense of ethics. In Pakistani politics, Moral corruption is at an all-time high. It is repulsive to see their political leadership so flagrantly disregard moral norms. Pakistan, which describes itself as a democracy, but is actually ruled by the military, which is a major problem on its hands. Also, for any kind of talks with India, Pakistan's prime minister must first obtain permission from the army, non-state actors, and others operating in the shadows. Aside from the fact that Pakistan is governed by a military dictatorship, another reason why Pakistan's politicians don't want peace is that their primary political agenda, either before or after becoming Prime Minister, is the territory of India, Kashmir. Since childhood, the word Kashmir has been ingrained in their minds. So whoever becomes Prime Minister of Pakistan will only speak about Kashmir and not science, or the economy, or the country's prosperity. They also think that once they have power, they have the right to use any means necessary, including dishonesty, violence, and manipulation, to achieve their goals. Because they believe they have the freedom to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals, they justify their actions by claiming they are within their rights to act in this way. 
As a final point, the Pakistani politician is currently leaning toward the contentious idea of dividing India along communal lines. It is incomprehensible to Pakistan that India is progressing despite its population's diversity in terms of religion, ethnicity, and culture, while Pakistan has literally failed with its monolithic population. We all knew, and it is no secret to the rest of the world, that the Pakistani army rules covertly over the country's most serious problem. Pakistan has a history of training terrorists as part of its own military, and these trained terrorists have been used in indirect attacks. For example, when Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Pakistan for the first time in over a decade to meet his counterpart Nawaz Sharif, the Pathankot Air Base terror attack took place. The Pathankot Air Force Base attack was linked to Pakistan, and the terrorists were in constant contact with those operating in Pakistan. In short, every time Pakistan's government tries to get along better with India, the country's military steps in and makes things worse. The role of the media is to inform the public through its reporting and analysis of government proceedings and operations, as well as the views and alternative policies of the opposition. It provides criticism and debate to ensure that the information is scrutinized from all angles. However, the role of media in Pakistan is distinct from what I described. Pakistani media institutions and journalists are generally considered dishonest due to the perception of being biased and being under the influence of corrupt political leaders. Even the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, has accused the media of concealing the corruption of former governments through their planted programs, claiming that people have lost interest in meaningless current affairs programs. The most recent illustration is an editorial in Pakistan today that praised Sharif for his call to better relations with India. But the document added that this action must be taken while fully supporting the right of self-determination of the Kashmiris in all international forums. It also said that if India can provide Pakistan with credible and tangible proof that Pakistan supports terrorism, then Pakistan can take the steps it needs to make things right and the situation can be resolved to everyone's satisfaction. They want proof of what America has already proved by assassinating terrorist leaders in their country. Even India attacked the terrorist camps in Pakistan. The Indian Army launched surgical strikes against terrorist camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. The Pakistani military and intelligence services are still linked to terrorist groups. So the onus of proof is squarely on Pakistan to prove to India's satisfaction that neither its military nor its political leaders are complicit in terrorism. The document also stated that the withdrawal of Kashmir's special status in August 2019 forced young political activists to turn into militants, which further strained relations between Pakistan and India. Even though the constitution of Pakistan says that everyone has the same rights and no one should be treated differently because of their caste, creed, or religion. However, the truth is, Islam is still the state religion and Muslims have more rights than Hindus and other religious minorities. For example, during the spread of the coronavirus, the government of Pakistan denies food supplies to Hindus and Christians. When the world is united in fighting against COVID-19 pandemic, however, Pakistan's religious discrimination remains a top priority amidst this global crisis. When Hindus face persecution and death in Pakistan, or when they got expelled from Kashmir, no one feels sorry for them. However, giving Hindu refugees in India preferential treatment over Muslim refugees is oppressive. The CAA has been criticized in this regard. In India, there are Muslim political parties whose leaders have openly said at rallies inciting hate speeches against the majority Hindu population that say that give us 15 minutes without the police in charge and we will wipe out the majority Hindus. They have not been banned for hate speech and are still flourishing. Nothing bad has happened to any Muslims in India because this is not Pakistan. Nonetheless, human rights in India continue to be questioned by other countries. Do they have the authority to inquire about India's human rights? 
No country has the right to tell India how to treat its people. India has always been and will always be a free democracy. And other developed countries, who think they are morally right in targeting India, can hardly afford to lecture India, given its history of wars in developing nations and violations of human rights. And India, which is a democratic nation, where everyone has free will and the right to speak their mind, cannot form relationships with a semi-democratic country like Pakistan, where discrimination is common. Pakistan can't talk about peace, and even if they did, the question would be how long it could keep the peace. Will their trained terrorists be on board with them when they find themselves unemployed, and what will be their next job?